Hello and welcome to the seventh video in our Revit Starter series. And today we're going to have a look at creating drawings within Revit. First of all, allow me to apologise for my voice. I have a sore throat um, and it is on its way uh, to recovery at the moment. But hopefully you can all hear me um, clear, if not loud. So allow me to introduce myself for anyone who's new to the series. I'm Matt Calloway and I'm one of the application engineers here at Man and Machine. If you haven't done so already, do jump onto the Man and Machine website where you can sign up to this video series. You can also check out our blog um, on there and we also have a YouTube channel where you'll be able to find the recording for this uh, webinar and all our previous webinars as well. So let's jump straight into Revit. Okay. So I'm going to have a look at creating some details in this. And there's two kind of different ways I want to show this. So first of all, we're using the same model that we have done previously. And I'm just going to jump straight into the level zero floor plan. And for this one, maybe we're going to just do a, a very basic um, wall detail for, for this example. So the first thing we need to do is create a section view. So I'm going to go to the view tab on the rim bar. And I'm going to select the section line tool. I'm going to click start point, click an end point, and that's going to create this section. Now, I don't want um, a, a large draw distance on this. So with this little crop box that we kind of got here, I'm going to drag that back. So all we're going to see is the wall where we have this window. So first of all, this will have created a new section in our project browser that we can access. But equally, I can right click on the section line in the view and I can go into that view. And it's kind of the same as double clicking it in the project browser. So once we're in here, maybe we want to create a call out for the base of this wall here. And that's what we're going to detail up. So again, on the view tab, I'm going to select the call out tool. And somewhere over this window here, I'm going to create this call out. And again, we should have a new view in our project browser called section two call out one, which I could rename to typical wall detail or something like that. But for this example, we'll just leave it as it is. So now that we're inside the view, we can start to customize this. And this will be the view that we detail up. First of all, we have this crop region, this rectangular box, and this represents the, the extents of the original call out. And with that selected, we have this outer dash box here, and this is our annotation crop window. So we can have annotations that exist outside the crop window, but only so long as it's within the dashed box. Although I might have a play around with that later. So a couple of things I'm going to do. First of all, for this view on our view settings right at the bottom, I'm going to change the detail level to fine. We should be able to see the hatch patterns of the various line works uh, within the wall. I'm going to change the scale for now. 1 to 50 is probably not going to be right for this, uh, this size drawing. Uh, maybe I'll go with 1 to 20. So things will look a little bit better, but won't be too small that you can see them. I'm going to hide a few things. We have a grid line here that we don't want. I'm going to right click on that, override graphics and view, and hide anything that's classed as a grid line. There we go. We have the floor that was done for the um, terrain outside the project in the previous videos that I very crudely drew in there and isn't really going to be um, in the project as such. So again, I'm just going to hide that. Whoops. And I use the keyboard shortcut to hide my category then. So I'm going to control Z and this time we'll just hide in view by elements. So this is what we're going to detail up. If we go to the annotate tab, this is where we can find most of the annotations. For the First thing, we're going to place a detail. So we have this component button here. We have detail component and repeating detail component. If I select a detail component and I change the type in the properties window, somewhere in here we should have a detail for a brick. And we've got a few here. We've got this running section here. And this is going to give us a detail of a single brick with some mortar on top. I'm going to rotate that around so it's facing the correct way. I could line that up. It's just slightly too big for, for this layer of wall, but we'll pretend it's the right size. We could modify the family 
make it the correct size, but uh, we don't really have the time today. I'm going to left click there, place that, and you can see that we now have a brick with a single um, mortar joint beneath it. I could keep on placing those if I wanted to. So I just create similar. I could place another one above there and kind of give the impression of, of bricks going up the wall. But it's going to be very monotonous individually placing all those uh, details. What I can do instead is what's called a repeating detail com component. With a repeating detail component, we can select a detail. We can choose the layout and the space in between. And what that allows me to do, if I just click the right snap point, not that one, is I can click a snap point and running my mouse cursor upwards, or in any particular direction really, I can get a run of those details. Now I'm just going to go part way up this wall and just draw that in underneath the window there. And that's going to give us the impression of individual bricks. And I could number those with a, another detail if I wished. I can do the same for the internal block work. Again, starting the repeating detail component tool. And if we have a look, we have a 100 mil block work there. And I should be able to do something similar. Now we don't have quite enough run for the last little bit here. I could do something a bit more bespoke for that one. Maybe if I just had the detail of a, an individual mortar joint, I could add an additional mortar joint on top and give the impression of a half size block, for example. We have our curtain wall window here, and we have the mullion that was associated with it, but this might not be the design of mullion that we're gonna have there. So again, I'm gonna select, and I'm gonna hide the mullion that's in the model. And I'm gonna manually draw in something that's probably a bit more appropriate. So again, on the annotate tab, we have this detail line tool. We have a number of draw options such as lines and rectangles and circles and arcs. And we can choose a line style. Revit comes with some predefined ones, but you can create your own line style. So if you have your own custom line weights, line patterns and colors, you can preset those up and they'll be available in this list here. But I'm just gonna go with the default thin lines option there. And maybe on here, 20 mils from the inside, I'm gonna go all the way across Maybe I'll have a bit more of a lip on the outside and maybe a, a little drop over there. I accidentally clicked out. And I'm just going to go with something that very cruelly looks like that. And using the align command on the modify tab, I'm going to align the top of this with the base of the window there to fill that gap. I'll do something a bit simpler for the top. For this one, maybe I'll just do a simple rectangle, like so. I'm gonna adjust this slightly. I can manually drag that in. Using these temporary dimensions, I can be quite precise and, and specify exactly how much it needs to extend outside of the wall or inside of the wall and, and so on and so forth. But for the top here, I might just make it nice and flush. So I'm gonna to snap to the inside of the wall, I'm going to snap to the outside of the wall, and I'm then going to snap to the top of this glass panel here. And that's just very simply going to represent uh, the frame to this window, the mullion for this, this window here. I can add dimensions onto this view, so we might want to know the thicknesses of the various layers within the wall. Again, if I go to the uh, annotate tab, on the left hand side we have all our various dimensions. I'm going to select aligned, and then by clicking the various line works within the wall and using the tab key to cycle through, I can pick out the various thicknesses. And I'm just going to place that above there. As you can see for the, the scale, that's a bit crowded. Now we could adjust the scale and it'll fit a bit more nicely. But what you can also do is if you select the dimension, is we can move these values out, for example. Okay, and just give ourselves a bit more space. I 
I might want to display information about the type of layers within the wall. I could add some notes onto there, some text with some uh, leaders. But what we also have is tags within Revit. Selecting a material tag, I can move my mouse cursor over a particular layer of the wall and it's going to have a look at the material and it's going to pull out the name. For example, for the brick layer at the front here, I'm going to left click to start this leader. I'm going to put an elbow on there and then the name of the material. I can do the same for the next layer. The next layer. And then finally, the last layer. Okay, so this is pulling that information directly out from the material that's assigned to the wall. So if I select the wall and we have a look at the makeup, we can see the materials that it's associated with, and that's what's going to get displayed. Next, we'll add some insulation into there. So again, on the annotate tab, we have the insulation button. We can specify the width of the insulation and how we want to draw the insulation. Now, I always get this one wrong, so let's see what happens here. I'm going to go with to far side. And if I snap to the bottom left-hand corner of the insulation layer, I've got that right this time. Okay. And just like with repeating detail component, I can just run up as far as I need to run and I can draw in the hatch pattern there for insulation. If I want to fill an area with a custom hatch pattern, maybe for the mullion at the top of the window here. Again, on the annotate tab, I can create what's called a fill region. This will allow me to draw an area. And inside that area, we can fill that with a hatch pattern. We can specify what hatch pattern we use within the type selector in the properties window. Again, you can fully customize your own hatch patterns. For this one, let's have a look. Let's go with a cross hatch, just to pick something at random. Click the green finish tick button, and we'll have that hatch pattern within the area that we drew. So I won't go too overboard on this particular detail. So we'll leave that one there. And what we're going to do next is create what's called a drafting view. So this time on the rim bar, if I go to the view tab, instead of creating a section and then creating a color, I'm going to create what's called a drafting view. And for this one, maybe it's going to be some instructions for a door, how it needs to be installed, for example. So I'm just going to call this one door detail. And what we should have now in the project browser is a new category for views. And in there, we can see our drafting views. This at the moment isn't linked to the model. So with the call out, we could see the model there. We could see the walls. We could see the windows with the mullions and the floors. And we can hide those in views just like you can any other view within the model. But this is kind of its own 2D space that we can draw in. Now, I've already run through some of the draw tools. For, so for this one, we're going to insert some CAD drawings and bring in some text. So first of all, I'm going to go to the Insert tab. And we have the option to link in a CAD file or we can import a CAD file. So in this one, we're going to import the CAD file. So it's going to make a copy of that and bring it into the project. Whereas link, it would always look back to the original CAD drawing every time you opened up a project. I'm just going to navigate to the folder for our Revit Live series, session seven, where I have a couple of DWGs I'm going to bring in. So first of all, we'll go with the elevation view. We have a number of settings at the bottom. I'm just going to set this to black and white and the import units auto detect. I'm going to open that and that's going to bring in the detail for an elevation view of a door. I also want to have the floor plan view of this door so i'm going to do exactly the same again insert import cad and this time i'm going to get the plan view for this door revit remembers your previous settings i'm just going to click ok and bring that in now at the moment these two are on top of each other so i'm going to select the plan view of the door 
when you bring in a CAD file, it's automatically going to be pinned into place. So on the Modify tab, I'm going to unpin that, which will allow me to, to move it. And then using the Move command, I'm just going to pick a start point, pick an end point, and just move that directly below the uh, elevation view of the door. Next, we're going to bring in some text. And I'm going to place that just off to the right-hand side. Again, we can find text on our Annotate tab. Now we already have some text written out in a notepad. And for this, it's just the general terms and conditions for Revit. So nothing too excited there, but it's a nice block of text for us to have to insert. So I'm just going to copy this text. I'll minimize that out of the way. Start the text command. And within the text command, before we place the text, we have a number of options. We can just simply place a text with no leader. Or we can choose various types of leaders to come off the text. We can choose where from the text the leaders will come from. You can control the left and right hand side independently. You've got your text alignment. And then lastly, in the properties window, in the type selector, you can choose the type of text you want to place. Maybe for this example, I want four millimeter text. That currently doesn't exist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate an existing type of text, in this case, the 3.5. And I'm just going to give this new text a new name, and I'm just going to call it 4mm Arial. With our new type of text, all we need to do is update the properties associated with it. I'm going to make the text size 4mm. Now that we have our new text style to choose from, I'm just going to left click somewhere to start the text box. Just using a simple paste command, I can paste all that text we copied from the notepad into this text box. I can move this around using the move grip at the top. And I can adjust the width of this and how many lines it's going to go over by adjusting the grips on the right hand side. And place that off to one side there. If you needed to, we don't in this case, but you can also rotate the text as well. So we now have this door detail, but I want to associate it with part of the project. Now, if I go back to level zero, we pre created a previous call out on the section of this window here. Maybe I want this door to be associated with this double door here. Now I could create a call out, but the call out is going to create a new view in the project browser, just like what it did with the section. But if I start the callout command and before I draw the callout, I can choose instead for it to refer to an existing view as opposed to creating a new one. And from our list here, we can access the door detail. I can now draw that over the double door on the front of our building here. And now if I select this callout and go to view, it will take me to the detail that we've previously created. I can now, wherever there's an instance of this door to be installed, have that call out associated with this detail. So that's all I'm gonna go through for today. My voice is on its, on its way out now. Uh, do sign up for our next video where we'll be um, taking a look at schedules within Revit. Um, they're pretty neat um, as schedules within Revit. Um, so do sign up uh, for that. And if you've missed the previous videos um, in our series, then do head over to the Man Machine YouTube channel and you can watch those there. And again, thank you all for watching today.